topic of my presentation is MRI evaluation of spectrum of transverse myelitis. Introduction Transverse myelitis is an acute inflammatory disease of spinal cord characterized by rapid onset of bilateral neurological symptoms. Uh, the symptoms can be motor in, in the form of symmetric or asymmetric upper or lower limb weakness depending upon the level of cord involvement, sensory disturbances in the form of hypoesthesia, paresthesia, or allodynia autonomic dysfunction involving bowel, bladder or sexual dysfunction. Symptoms evolve over hours or days, maximum clinical severity within 10 days of onset. Even though clinical features are helpful to orient the diagnostic suspicion, uh, for example, timing and severity of myelopathy symptoms, the differential diagnosis of inflammatory myelopathies is often challenging due to overlapping features. Moreover, non-inflammatory etiologies can sometimes mimic an inflammatory process. In this setting, magnetic resonance imaging, that is MRI, is becoming a fundamental tool for the characterization of spinal cord damage. Causes of transverse myelitis are diverse, broadly classified as idiopathic, which is a diagnosis of exclusion, and those which are attributable to underlying disease process. Transverse myelitis can be longitudinally extensive, involving more than three segments, and all or most of the cross section of cord or it can be short segment cord involvement which has less than two segments of eccentric or asymmetric cord involvement. Inflammatory myelopathies can be recognized in numerous immune mediated disorders including multiple sclerosis, apoporin 4, IgG positive and MO spectrum disorder and myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein antibody associated disease. Based on underlying pathophysiology, inflammatory myelopathies can be classified into uh, cell-mediated autoimmune disorders that are confined to CNS, for example, MS, or associated with specific antibodies primarily targeting CNS antigens or associated with systemic autoimmune disorders having secondary CNS involvement, for example, in SLE, Jogren syndrome, and sarcoidosis. The characterization of spinal cord lesions in terms of longitudinal extension location of external plane, involvement of white matter and or gray matter, specific patterns of contrast enhancement often allows a proper differentiation of these diseases. Besides imaging, paraclinical testing helps in diagnostic framing of these disorders. For example, the presence of oligoclinal bands in CSF and typical brain lesions involving periventricular or just cortical areas suggest multiple sclerosis as the most likely disease cause. While Autoantibodies targeting epoporin 4 and MOG are the most frequent causes of antibody associated transverse myelitis. Aim and methodology Aim of study is MRI evaluation of spectrum of transverse myelitis. Methodology of the study was conducted in Department of Radio Diagnosis, Government Medical College, Jammu. The study included 30 patients suspected of transverse myelitis, fulfilling the inclusion criteria. Standard MRI protocol that is SAG and XL T1, T2 images followed by post contrast T1 images. Diffusion weighted M sequences were taken wherever required. Inclusion criteria those patients who were suspected of transverse myelitis based on symptoms such as acute or subacute onset of motor, sensory or autonomic dysfunction involving spinal cord. Patients those who were referred for MRI evaluation for suspected transverse myelitis. Exclusion criteria. Those patients were excluded who had an alternative diagnosis of cord pathology at the time of presentation, for example, traumatic cord injury, and patients who had past history of hypersensitivity to IV contrast. So this is the case of 54-year-old woman with weakness in bilateral lower limbs with associated urinary retention. See, so MRI lumbar spine, T2 SAG image shows mild expansion of conus with altered signal intensity in distal cord and conus. On post contrast imaging, there is thin smooth peripheral enhancement on of the cord. This is another case of a 40 year old woman presenting with sudden onset of weakness of bilateral upper and lower limbs. On T2 SAG images, there is long segment hyper intensity and on actual images, there is more than two-third cross-section of cord involvement. This is post uh, SAGE and actual post-contrast image of the same patient showing faint patchy peripheral enhancement.
This is MRA of a 14 year old patient presenting with history of fever followed by all four limb weakness. Cluster images show long segment linear hyperintensity involving low surviving upper dorsal cord. On actual T2 images, central involvement of cord is noted with characteristic edge sign of grave metal involvement. Results out of 30 patients in our study, 21 had transverse myelitis as the cause for these symptoms. The rest nine patients had other causes like spinal cord infarction, nutritional deficiencies in the form of B12 and copper deficiencies, spondylotic myelopathy, spinal dural EB fistula, and spinal metastasis. Out of 21 patients who had transverse myelitis as the cause for their symptoms, 13 were females and 8 were males. 9 out of 21 patients presented with acute onset motor and sensory symptoms both. 5 patients presented with bilateral upper limb weakness only. 3 patients presented with bilateral lower limb weakness only. 2 patients presented with bowel as bladder involvement and 2 patients presented with all of these symptoms. Out of 21 patients, 10 patients were diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. That is about 47% of the total patients. 6 patients were found positive for aquaporin 4 antibody disease and 4 patients were found positive for malin oligodendrocyte therapy protein antibody. And 1 patient was diagnosed with sarcoidosis. Most common MRI finding was altered cord signal intensity that is T2 stir hyper intense cord signal. It was found in all the 21 patients with associated cord expansion in 14 and cord enhancement on post contrast images in the rest 15 patients. On external T2 images, most common location of the lesion was peripheral, that is, in 11 patients, forming 52% of the total patients, followed by central gray and white matter involvement in 6 and only central gray matter involvement in the rest 4 patients. Image images. Short segment cord involvement was in, found in around 11 patients, with the rest 10 showing long segment cord involvement. Cervical dorsal spine being the commonly the most commonly involved uh, part of spine, followed by whole spine uh, whole spinal cord involvement in six and dorsal cord only dorsal cord involvement in four patients, while involvement of conus was found in three patients. Discussion. Most common cause of transverse myelitis in our study was found out to be multiple sclerosis, forming about 47.6% of the patients, followed by neuro neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder and myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein antibody disease. Most common symptom was acute onset motor and sensory weakness combined in about 42% patients, followed by bilateral lower limb weakness. Most common MRI finding was T2 hyper intense signal intensity of the cord followed by cord enhancement. These were my references. Thank you.